Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting video for Eve Echoes. This time around, we're having a look at another one of the faction frigates with the Gurustas Pirates, Worm. Before we jump in, I'm having a lot of fun making these videos. If you're enjoying them, come let me know by hitting like, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and then finding me either in the comment section below, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Discord, um, or indeed in the game. Today is the 7th of January as I'm recording this, and I want to give a huge shout out to all the folks who uh, caught me in Jita this morning. Um, that was an amazing experience. I docked in Jita and got a whole load of, hey, it's Captain Benzi, and just people talking. We had a great little chat in uh, in. in G to local. That was amazing and I really love reading your gu uh, you guys' messages. I love hearing from you folks what you're enjoying about the videos, what you want to see in future and what you, you think would really help. Always, always happy to hear that. So do come find me on any of those channels and let me know. Anyway, all of that said and done, this in front of you is not actually a Kaldari uh, Merlin, though I know it does look like one. This is a Gurustus Pirate's Worm. Now, if we go into the ship tree and look at the Gurustus Pirates, you'll see that their three ships here are all ultimately very similar in design to various different of the Kaldari ships. Now, that's because the Rabbit, who is one of the founders of the Gurustus Pirates, um, used to be part of the Kaldari Navy, so it's uh, theorised that he stole the designs for most of the Gurustus Pirates ships from the Kaldari Navy, but there are rumours that he may have even designed some of the ships himself, some of the Kaldari Navy ships. Anyway, enough of the backstory. Why do I love this particular little frigate? Well, <laughs> for starters, because I blew my drumiel out the sky last night. I was running some tier 8 missions. Um, I got a little bit too, uh, too cocky and got hit by two or three warp disruptors, locked me into position and blew me sky high. Um, I didn't quite have the rigs to survive that. So, Alex the Master, again, amazing shout out. This guy has been incredible in my Discord, answering people's questions and giving me a hand with certain things as well. Um, big shout out to him. He has built me a worm and just kindly donated it so I can show you guys what this is all about. Now, this boat is very much a drone boat. Let's have a look at its stats page and then we'll come to how I fitted it. So, as you can see, it's a frigate. It's got two drone slots, two medium slots, four low slots, three power grid uh, rigs, and three mechanical rigs. Its roll bonuses are disgusting. A 400% increase to light drone hit points and a 400% increase to light drone damage. Then for Frigate Command skill, you will also gain an additional 3,000 meters drone control range. And for Advanced Frigate Command skill, you'll get an additional plus 4% shield resistance. And the stats below this as well, you can see a decent enough overall defense to start with for a Frigate. Um, 320 meters per second, warp speed 5AU and inertia modifier 2.85. A very small signature radius of 40, very, very small cargo hold of 260. Ultimately, this is a fast-moving, small, little ship. It's not designed to do anything other than blow up other things using drones, and boy, does it do that so well. Just straight away, that 400% light drone damage and that 3,000 meter drone control range per level of Frigate Command bonus, that's great fun. With five levels in Frigate Command, that's 15 kilometers extra drone control range. In fact, with the setup I've got here, you'll see that my DPS is insane at nearly 460 DPS, um, and I can actually control my drones. I've got a drone control bonus alone of 55 kilometers. That's on top of whatever the basic drone control range is. So I can go into a, into a mission or a PvP situation, I can launch my drones and I can just get the heck out of there as I'll show you in a bit. So how do I recommend fitting this? Well, of course, with drones, this thing has a fairly sizable drone bay when it loads now, 150 meters cubed. So what I ultimately recommend doing is grabbing four Federation Navy Hobgoblins, four Kaldari Navy Hornets, four Imperial Navy Acolytes, and four Republic Fleet Warriors. Now, why is that? Ultimately, the stats for each of these are the same other than their speed and their damage type and their HP. Ultimately, the damage that they do appears to be equal. Certainly, if I unequip any of these drones and re-equip, my DPS will not change on the calculation page a moment ago. Now, it's worth noting that the, uh, to just give a basic rundown here, the Imperial Navy Acolyte being a Mar, deal electromagnetic damage. The Federation Navy Hobgoblin being uh, Galente, deal thermal damage. Kaldari Navy Hornets deal kinetic damage and Republic Na uh, Fleet Warriors, being Minmatar, deal explosive damage. So having all of these means if you know what you're going into, if you're going up against, say, uh, a Mars ships that are weak to explosive, you can pop in your Republic Fleet Warriors. If you're going up against uh, Minmatar ships, which are weak to 
or Kaldari, which tend to be weak to electromagnetic on their shields, you can pop in an Acolyte. A lot of versatility on this, and you can do that without needing to dock at a station. So just go for the very best drones that money can buy, shove a load in your drone hold. Now secondarily, on the mid slots, I've gone all the way up here to two of the interruptive warp disruptors. Um, these do stack, I've discovered. Um, I wasn't entirely sure if that was the case in Echoes as well, but yes, I can confirm it is. That means with two interruptive warp disruptors, if I whack both of those on a target, I am warp disruptor, warp scrambler strength four. That means your standard, uh, if, if someone's got a venture which has a warp strength, uh, a warp stability of three, if they've got a rig on it for warp, uh, warp stability of four, I will still lock them down solo, which is just hilarious. This is an amazing PvP ship, and certainly if I still had it, two interruptive warp disruptors would be exactly what I'd be putting on my Dramiel as well. Now, for the low slots, of course I am going to put on an Imperial Navy Drone Damage Amplifier, just because, well, I want to be able to deal as much damage with my drones as possible. I'm then going full shield tank with a Kaldari Navy Small Shield Generate, uh, small shield Booster, and a Mark V Medium Shield Extender. Now, um, if it were up to me, I would actually upgrade this one to something a bit higher. I just, I, I, I don't have the full amount of... Uh, I don't have the full amount of ISK that I would like to for that. And sorry, that's a Kaldari Navy Small Shield Extender as well. Um, I haven't gone for the overly active. If I start taking damage, I just whack one of those on and boost my shield right the way up. The fourth slot then is a damage control. Now, damage control is a really unusual thing, and I'm going to show you in a moment what this does in the field. Essentially, you up all of your resistances, um, and you, uh, it's, it's quite insane what these can do in the game right now. But we'll showcase that in a moment. Now with this setup, I am looking at a stable capacitor, 459.87, nearly 460 DPS from the drones, and a very solid respectable defense, especially for a frigate, of 7925. Now structure-wise, that's only 883. For armor, that's only 788, but I've got a whopping 4147 HP into my shields. This thing can take a beating as it moves out of range. Now, if we look at the rigs, you can see I've actually gone to the uh, the effort of uh, fitting this one out fairly extensively. I've gone for a couple of warp core optimizers. <laughs> Basically, after losing the Dromiel, I then flew in with a Vexor to try and uh, take some of the ships out and see if I could get my stuff back. Uh, my Vexor got nuked. I then went in with a Caracal, and that got nuked too. So I lost a Dramiel, a Vexor, and a Caracal, all fully equipped in the space of about an hour. Um, all because I didn't, I, I was getting locked down by warp disruptors. So I've put in warp core optimizers now. <laughs> I have learnt my lesson. Now on the other side, I've got a drone control range augmenter, um, the Mark II version, just to get the additional 10 kilometers of range onto this, um, and then along with core defense field extenders 2 and field extender 1. Doesn't appear though that the field extenders stack, so I may end up replacing this um, with something else, probably to the effect of uh, drone damage. Um, or drone movement speed or something like that, just to, to really get the most out of those drones. I do also want to add on a third warp core optimizer just to be as safe as houses if I go into PvP, but there we go, that is how I fit out the worm, and as you can see, it gets some fairly beefy stats. Now I'm going to showcase this by jumping out of the station here, Ikoden, uh, Idoken, which I suppose is like the opposite, it's named after someone did a Hardoken backwards, maybe. Um, I'm going to jump out to the mission site here, and I'm going to show you this boat in action, how I use it. I do a kind of weird kiting strategy, um, and you'll see how little damage you can take in this boat running these, uh, these encounters. So let's undock and have a look. While we're jumping to the mission site, I just want to answer a question I get a lot about me on drone boats, and that's why don't I stack my drone tubes? Ultimately here, it's because I'm using multiple different types of drones. I want to be able to apply those as required. Anyway, we're arriving at the mission site now, got a little bit of lag coming in as usual. What I'm going to do is the simple lock on, pop both my drones out, pick any one of the guys in this mission, and orbit it out to 30 kilometers, then apply my drones. And there's a reason I do things this way, and ultimately it's so that I get that lovely tangent of trying to push myself out to 30 Ks as my drones go into combat. I'm doing that full pilot away to get to that 30 K range, and you'll see now, 
that in just a moment I'm going to kill that first target nice and quickly, nice and easy. My drones are going to move on to the next target. I am still drifting away from everyone. I'm moving further and further away. I can be 55 kilometers upwards away from my drones and they're still going to be doing what they do best. You'll see now I'm well and truly just about to hit 20 kilometers away from the combat and I'm going to keep drifting away. Now when the next wave comes in, I can just lock onto them. I can rear target my drones once I've got lock there. Let's get my drones back on. Wait until my drones hit combat. And once they're in combat range, I'm going to activate that drone damage amplifier. And you'll see, I haven't activated any of my defenses at all, but I'm not getting hit. And simply put, look, I've not taken any damage at all at the moment. Like, genuinely, I haven't even been scratched. If I needed to, though, I can pop on that uh, damage control. And I said I'd show what this does. If we go back into the fitting, have a look now at my defense. With the drone, uh, with that damage control on, my resistances have shot up. My defense is insane with the sheer amount of HP um, and resistances that it has to incoming damage. I take one heck of a beating. But as you can see, I'm well and truly out of combat now. I have missed locking onto one of those targets, so let's lock on now, send in my drones again, and just finish off that one target. I'm well and truly safe. I'm well away from combat. I can blow these guys up and then just gradually swing back around. I think I'm far enough away now. I can lock onto that frigate wreck, start moving back in, and start looting. And that's the mission. That is how simple this thing makes missions. And you can do that in some surprisingly um, high level, uh, surprisingly high level uh, combat anomalies. Again, couldn't think of the word. Combat anomalies, that's what I'm talking about here. You can just jump into a combat anomaly, come into it from a, uh, from a, a far angle, so that you're, uh, like if you remember I said before, like in my mining video, if you haven't seen it, when you're going into a combat anomaly here, rather than just warp, you can warp to a side of it. So I can decide that I'm going to warp in at 50 kilometers away from this small anomaly. This small anomaly, ultimately, I'm well and truly way overpowered for a small anomaly, which is why I showed you with a tier, uh, tier 5 mission rather than a tier 2 anomaly. But just to showcase it, if you come in at a far range like this, when I eventually land into this area, if there were any ships around, they're all going to be sort of 50, 60 kilometers away, if not further. There we are, they're all 50 kilometers away. I'm quite comfortable being where I am now. I can sit here, I can lock onto these guys, send my drones out, and I am miles away from anything and everything. If something does get a little bit close, I can add that, uh, I can pop that damage control on just while I push myself to a bit of range. Um, yeah, you probably can swap one of the, uh, like the shield extenders for something like a, uh, a micro warp drive just to push me further out of combat that little bit faster. But as it stands, I'm pretty much doing okay with things as the way they are. I just jump into a combat anomaly from a far distance like this um, and start hitting things before they get into range of me. I can usually pick off the, the stuff in those uh, encounters before they get close enough to be of any threat at all. But there we are. That is the Gurastas Pirates Worm in action. I just wanted to showcase uh, this beautiful little boat. I love how it looks. I, do, I am a fan of the Merlin hull anyway, but I'm also a big fan of like the various different pirate ships. My Dromiel, I think, is still going to be my favourite. And when we hit live, a Dromiel is the ship that I'm going to be rushing myself towards as soon as possible, just because I miss 15 astronomical unit warp speed and 650 metres per second. Um... 650 meters per second uh, ship velocity, but there we go. Anyway, I do hope you find this useful. Um, this this little frigate is utterly insane. The stuff you can do with this frigate is just madness. As I said, you can do anomalies that are way higher than your tier should be. You can comfortably do combat encounters way beyond uh, the, the the sort of the swinging the weight that you think uh, a frigate should be able to punch at. So yeah, I think <laughs> with the faction frigates, I'm back to being a frigate pirate. Um, I will probably still use destroyers come live, but I think frigates are where my heart has always been, and they're probably where it's going to stay. And I do look forward to live or the next phase of the beta, whatever comes next, with corporations being added. I've been scouting out areas um, to set up a corporation headquarters. I'm looking for names at the moment. I've had a couple of suggestions that I'm thinking on. I will be taking suggestions for uh, future 
uh, for the corporation name. If you've got any ideas you'd like to add to the hat, drop them in the comment section below. Eventually, as we get closer, I will put up on Twitter a little poll just asking for people's opinions on which of those names we ultimately go for. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has inspired you to give, uh, give this amazing little ship a try. Otherwise, you know, I will see you out there in space. I can't wait to hear how you're doing on this one. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.